The following podcast was recorded on Thursday, March 17th, 2022, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish of Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our presenter, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. Today, Jim will recap Wednesday's FOMC meeting and discuss the Fed's priority. Chairman Powell made it clear yesterday that inflation or price stability is now the Fed's priority. What are your thoughts on the Fed's focus? I think that um, people need to come to that understanding that the Fed is raising rates because we have high inflation and the Fed will continue to raise rates until inflation goes down. Now, there's really one goal in raising rates, that we slow the economy enough that we wind up having prices go down. Now, maybe that happens on a combination of a couple of rate hikes and a natural slowing in the economy or more uh, problems with financial markets or commodity prices that maybe even induced a recession, or markets are resilient, the economy's resilient, and the Fed has to go seven or eight rate hikes this year and push even more rate hikes next year to slow the economy. But understand, they're going to keep raising rates until the inflation rate gets under 3%, which is what their target is. If along the way, oh, but they can't raise rates because financial markets are wobbly or the economy is slowing or there's problems with the plumbing of the financial system. Well, that's kind of what they want. In fact, Chairman Powell mentioned it is appropriate to see a tightening of financial conditions. That is a code word for, I want to see stock prices go down. I want to see interest rates go up. And he needs that to happen. And this is unusual because I say this And some people think I've stated the obvious, but most people still think, no, that's not the case. That one, things get messy or ugly, the Fed will stop, they will do QE, they will save the market with some version of of some kind of program that looks like QE that will support um, asset prices. That was what they did every single time from 2008 to 2020. But now that we have the highest inflation in 40 years, the game has changed, and I think it's really about getting prices back down. And Jim, can you compare market pricing versus manager opinion? Yeah, and this kind of feeds off of it. So if we go to the first chart that we have, it's actually a table, and it shows that yesterday the Fed hiked rates. That's in the upper left corner. And all the green is whenever a Fed rate hike is priced in. And we've actually got eight rate hikes priced in for this year, the one that happened yesterday, and seven more over the next six meetings, which means that the market has um, 250 basis point rate hikes priced in. Now, it's only a 61% chance out there, but the Fed itself in its dot chart said that there'd be seven rate hikes this year. The one yesterday, six more. So the Fed's at seven, the market's at eight. Let's not quibble about the difference between seven and eight because it's not material. Point is, is that This is what the market is priced in. Now, if you go to the next chart, this was taken from, (coughs) excuse me, uh, the Bank of America Global Fund Manager Survey, which I might add was put out Tuesday, 48 hours ago. So this is fresh off the presses. They surveyed 299 managers. The average was expecting 4.4 rate hikes for 2022. And if you look at the bottom of the table, more than six rate hikes was only 4% of the managers. Now, this was two days ago. Now, wait a minute, the Fed's at seven, the market's at eight, and 96% of managers think they're gonna do less than six. There's a disconnect here. Now, there's two disconnects, right? How can the market be pricing in eight and these managers say 4.4 or 96% of them say less than six? Aren't they the market? Well, normally they are. But let's let's nuance this a little bit. The market pricing is repo rater, repo traders, excuse me, Fed funds traders, Eurodollar traders, short-term swap traders, 
people that trade in short-term debt instruments because Fed policy drives those interest rates and they're very attuned to it. They think eight. This survey is largely not those traders. This is largely long-term debt traders, corporate traders, high yield, equities, both domestic, fixed income, I mean, domestic, international, global, emerging markets. So it's everybody but them. They can't conceive of the Fed going seven or eight rate hikes. In fact, I've heard a number of them say to me, I just can't believe that they would actually do it because they have a 2020, pre-2020 mentality. The Fed is here to print like crazy whenever anything wobbles to stop it from wobbling. And that because that's exactly what they did. But now that there's inflation, the Fed, the, 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 the Powell put doesn't exist or it's got, you know, in market parlance, it's got a very, very low strike price. It's going to have to, market is going to have to go down a lot. I mean, a lot before the Fed winds up stepping up. So that's where you see this disconnect between these two. And I still think that this, the rest of 2022 is going to be managers coming to the revelation that the economy might be slowing, commodity markets might be messy, stock prices might wobble some more, lower, and the Fed is not coming to help. The Fed is going to pile on with more and more rate hikes because the Fed's priority right now is inflation. And let's turn next to the yield curve. What is the yield curve telling us? You've argued in the past that it inverts from the inside out. Yes. So if we go to the first chart, what I mean by the inside out is <clears throat> the yield curve. Where does it first invert? That's the cyan line. That is the seven-year, 10-year yield curve. That's pretty much the middle of the yield curve. And that inverted a couple of days ago. Uh, then what goes next is the red line. That's the five-year, 10-year spread. You know, so you start off right in the middle of the curve and then you keep going ever wider spreads on each on each wing of it. That one is at zero. Then the three-year, 10-year spread, that one is at one basis point. Uh, and then you go to the 10 to two-year, 10-year, and that's at 20 basis points. So the yield curve starts in the middle and it inverts. And then, it, and then as it gets wider and wider and wider, it starts inverting a little bit more. And if you go to the next chart, what it shows is that uh, the orange line in this uh, chart, or the, excuse me, the uh, the orange line in this chart is um, the three month. I'm sorry, let me let me respay it. The five year ten year is the green line. The five year ten year is currently at zero. Every time the five year ten year has inverted since the early 70s, eventually twos tens and three month ten years inverts as well too. Now eventually it can be anywhere from a couple of weeks to a year but they eventually do invert. So seven tens is inverted, threes tens is, is at zero, uh, five tens is at zero, threes tens is at one basis point. If all those curves invert, and let me give you a specific definition of inverting, they go negative for at least 10 days, because I think what's important here to know is that they persistently invert. They just don't print minus one basis point for three seconds. They have to stay there consistently for 10 days. That then usually means that eventually the entire yield curve will eventually invert. What I mean by that is not only two tens, not only three month tenure. If you go to the next chart, that's the three month tenure. Ultimately, I still think you're going to see the 30 year Fed funds rate invert. And what this next chart shows is the three month tenure curve. This is what I've referred to as the economist curve. When it inverts for 10 consecutive days, it has led, it's eight for eight in predicting recessions. The one exception is that September of 98, it only inverted on three different days. It never stayed consistently inverted like it did in all of those other periods. When the market is freely traded and, the, and you see short-term interest rates going up because the central bank's monetary policy is getting very, very tight and it drives it above long-term interest rates, that is usually a sign of stress in financial markets. And that stress can show up in uh, lower stock prices or risk markets. It could show up as a recession. It could show up with problems with the plumbing of the financial system. Right now, we've kind of got a little bit of all three. We've got lower risk markets right now. We've got problems in the plumbing of the financial system, especially the case with energy markets. Uh, yesterday, the energy, the energy Traders Association 
called for central banks to intervene in the energy market. And just before we started recording this podcast, President Macron of France has come out and said that they might have to nationalize some of their energy companies. The, the, the crude oil market and the energy market is not in a good place. The plumbing of the financial system has got a problem. And there's widespread calls that you're going to see a dramatic slowdown in the economy. So we've got a little bit of all of that happening as well, too. So what I think people need to understand as that process unfolds is this is not going to get the Fed to turn and say, oh, OK, now we got to stop with the rate hikes after one and start printing money. This is going to get the Fed to continue to think, no, this is what we want. We want tighter financial conditions, the euphemism for lower markets, because that way it'll do the work for us in helping slow the economy. So the emphasis I'll leave you with in conclusion here, everything is about prices. And I've even said this on this podcast and other places and written it, almost irrelevant what the growth rate numbers say, whether what, what, what payrolls are or retail sales um, or any of those other numbers that we like to look at that measure growth, durable goods, uh, because they're not going to change policy. They used to. What's going to change policy is inflation and whether or not the inflation numbers come down a lot so that the Fed can say that inflation is getting back under control. Now, over the very near term, March's inflation number, which will be out in the middle of April, looks like it's going to be a blowout number on the upside. With the, with the spike in energy prices and the spike in agricultural food prices uh, on top of everything else that we've seen and the consistent uptick in housing inflation, those numbers can just, they, they, we could print 9% year over year inflation, you know, in April alone. And there's a lot of credible forecasts that say over the next several, two or three months, we could even see 10% inflation just because of what's baked in the cake. And we might only be at 5% inflation by the end of the year. That's not going to get the Fed to stop. So I think what people need to understand is the metric is prices. And the Fed is going to raise rates and lean on markets and make market participants' lives miserable. And they're only going to stop when prices or inflation comes down. This we haven't seen since the 60s or 70s. I understand why a lot of people are pushing back. No, 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 that's not the way the Fed works. Yes, because for the last 40 years, they could print money, they could be aggressive in their easing, and they didn't have the consequence of inflation. Inflation, as I've said numerous times on this podcast over many months, is the game changer. It's here, and now yesterday at the FOMC meeting, I think the Fed has acknowledged it, and what you're seeing in market pricing and the inversion of the yield curve is at least debt traders are starting to understand that this is what we have in our future is a slowing economy, hard, tougher markets, an inverted yield curve is coming. It's now up to the rest of the market to start to understand that reality. Well, Jim, thank you for your thoughts today and thank you everyone for joining us. We are client driven. If you have any questions or feedback for future topics, please let us know. For any questions or further information on Arbor Research, Bianca Research, or Arbor Data Science, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Have a great day.